Welcome everybody, welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. This week we're going to have a look at the composite that I posted on Facebook a few days ago. Thank you everybody for all the comments that I got on this composite. It was absolutely fantastic. There were some comments suggesting changes to the photo. Maybe we'll incorporate those in the tutorial today, but I would ask you to view the tutorial from the point of view of what can I learn today rather than whether the shadow is in the wrong place or the birds are too big. Let's just view it from the point of view of a learning tutorial. Okay. With that said everybody this is where we're going to start off today with this photograph here we're going to add some train tracks we are going to add a bit of a different sky we're going to add some birds we're going to add a shadow we're going to add a person and we're going to add some little brush overlays here for the end so this is where we're hoping to end up today so as usual let's get started let's get rid of everything that we've done so far and start fresh okay so this is our background photo first one that we are going to come to is going to be the railway tracks and I'm going to use my pen tool it doesn't really matter what the settings are for the pen tool um, all we want to do is make a really quick selection so I'm just going to start right here we're going to mask a lot of this out anyway so we're just going to start right here go around we just want those tracks once we've gone around with our pen tool, it's going to come up here to this box here where it says selection and click on selection. That should put a selection all the way around the railway tracks here. So the next thing I'm going to do is go command C, come over to our background picture and go command V up to our move tool so we can move it into place and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller, just placing it in. What I might do is just drop the opacity on this layer just so we can see the horizon there and what I want to do is just place the tracks just as they're turning around the top of the horizon there so as I said all this is very subjective so let's bring the opacity back up again let's put a mask on the background layer here so we'll put a mask on here we're going to come over here to our brush tool we are going to pick a nice soft brush and we want to be painting on the mask in black and to zoom in a little bit with our black we want our flow and our opacity to a hundred percent so we're just going to come in painting on black we're just going to take away the tracks there and we're just going to go around we might make our brush a little bit smaller and if we hit x on our keyboard we can swap to white and we can put the tracks back up just up to the top there as they're going around the corner a little bit back in there back to black hitting x on our keyboard and we're just going to blend this in we can leave some of the stones here if you like i'm just going to blend the rest in make my brush a little bit smaller because i want to keep this little railway piece here Nice and easy, just blending it in. Make my brush a little bit bigger again. As you know, I'm doing this quite quickly, guys. I know you'll take a lot more time. Just using my right and left bracket keys to make that brush bigger and smaller. Okay, I'm just gonna come over to the other side again. I'm right up to this track, I think. So we'll just blend it all in. All the way up. Okay, hey, let's reduce that a little bit and have a look. Not looking too bad. This is not really adding anything, so I'm actually just going to take it out a little bit, make it look like it's going into the grass there. Okay, so not looking too bad. Once you're happy and you think you've blended it in pretty well, you might just add a little bit of a blur in the filters blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is come over to our sky. We're going to place the sky a little bit. We're going to use this one here. I'm going to use my marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to drag out and I just want it to go above the waves here, just about there. Go Command C, back to our picture and Command V. Again, our move tool, and I'm just going to keep moving this down all the way till I get to the horizon, just below the horizon there. If you want to have a quick look to see where you're at with the horizon, you can just drop the opacity a little bit and just be right on that horizon. That's pretty good. So we'll just we'll bump the opacity back up again. And then on this sky, I'm going to change the blend mode to darken. With the background here of the sky, you might just see just about here where you can still see some of the sky coming through onto the picture. So what we'll do is add a mask 
We'll grab our paintbrush tool. We're painting in black. We should still have a nice soft brush. And in black, I'm just going to go across that line just to get rid of it. So I'm happy with the sky. So the next thing I'm going to bring in is the bird. So we've got this bird picture here. And all I'm going to do on this one is go Command C, back to the original picture, Command V. I'm going to change the blend mode on this one to multiply. Come over here to our move tool and we're going to move them in position. I'm going to have a look at these ones, the birds in this other picture, and make them about that size. I am going to come up to filters and go to blur and I'm going to add a motion blur of about 9.1 and apply that. So we've got a little bit of a motion blur on that one and I am very happy with that. That's looking quite good. Now we have to come to our last picture here of our traveler. So again, we're going to have to cut the traveler out. I am going to use my pen tool for this as well. I'm going to use my command plus to zoom right in. I'm using my shift key to drag through. I'm going to start right down here on the feet and I'm going to make a selection with my pen tool all the way around. One thing I am going to turn on guys is the add new curve to selective curve objects up here. I'm going to turn that on and I'll come back a little bit later to show you that. But we're just going to start right down here on our feet. By the way, I have smart mode turned on as well, and we're going to make a selection. You can use a selection brush tool for this if you like as well. I'm going to go all the way around making a selection. What I'll do is I'll speed this up now and come back once I've gone all the way around. So we've completed our selection all the way around our traveler here. Zoom out so you can see that. We've still got this area here that we have to select as well. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And remember I told you we needed to have this one on here, add new curves to selective curve object. We can keep continuing with our selection in this area because we have this turned on here. Okay, so we'll just quickly do that as well. Okay, we've completed that. So we're going to hit selection up here. It's going to give us our marching ants all the way around. One thing I am going to do is just come over here to selection brush tool. So I can hit the refine button here. And I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. Just do that refine on the hair here and any other little spots that you think Affinity may need to take a look at. I'm going to smooth it by two on this one and feather it by two as well. Hit apply. Got our traveler here all selected. So again, it is Command C, back to our original picture, and Command V. So we need to just to resize now for perspective. And again, this is subjective. You can do this to whatever size that you like, whatever you think looks the best. And I'm happy with that. On our traveler layer here, I am going to add a curves adjustment. Drag it down just so it affects just the girl here, the traveler. I'm just going to make our usual S curve. Drag this one down a little bit, looking a little bit like that. Okay, we can have a look at the difference. Very, very subtle, but I think it just blends her in a little bit better. Now, you can add a mask layer to our traveler here, purely optional. You can zoom in and you can grab your brush, paint in black, make your brush really nice and small, and you can go all the way around and just clean up any bits that you think need a little bit of a tidy up. I'll leave that up to you. Um, I'll just leave it as is for now. So we'll come back to our travel layer here. I'm going to go Command J. On this top layer here, come up here to Arrange. I'm down to Flip Vertical. Grab my Move tool. I'm going to move this one all the way down just onto her feet here. Now, this is one of the suggestions from one of the comments that the light source is over in this direction here. So maybe her shadow should be going off to the side here. So let's do that. And again, everybody, this is subjective. I'll let you decide where the shadow is going to go. I am no expert on shadows. So let's put it across the track like that for now. On that layer, let's come down here to FX. Let's 
put a color overlay on it. Let's tick our Gaussian blur as well. And let's put about, we just see it start blurring a little bit, maybe about eight on that. Let's close it. Let's come up here to opacity. Let's just bring the opacity down to, oh, let's about 50%, maybe a little bit more. Okay, let's leave it at that. So we've got the shadow there. We can move it around a little bit if we want to, if you're not quite happy with it. Again, completely subjective. I'll let you decide where you want the shadow. Okay, so there's two more things that we are going to do. We're going to add a pixel layer. This pixel layer, I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool up here and drag it and I want just sort of a light color from the sky here. Let's click on it to activate it. Come to our brush tool. We are going to pick a nice soft brush again. We're going to bring our opacity down to about 40. Also our flow up to 40. We're going to make the brush quite big on these areas here. I'm just going to sweep through on each side. On that layer, I'm going to bring that down to 50%. Going to add one more pixel layer. I'm going to change the color on my brush to white. So I'm going to hit D on the keyboard to get my colors back to natural. Again, 40% on each one, about 40%. Nice big brush again, even bigger. And I'm just going to sweep over the whole photo, the white. And again, I'm going to bring that down to 50%. Well, there we go, everybody. That is the tutorial for this week. This is where we started. This is where we ended up. I really do hope that you have learned something in Affinity Photo this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, I'll say to you, be brave, go out and do something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.